Good morning. Good morning. Really good to see you this morning. Thanks for coming along. It's uh, great to gather together as a family. And uh, I just want you to turn to somebody that you're near and say, Welcome, you're a good part of our family. Just turn to somebody near you. <laughs> This is what it says in Psalm 118. The stone the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is wonderful to see. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Please Lord, save us. Please Lord, please give us success. Bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. We've come together to worship our amazing God. But I want to tell you something before we start with a song. I want to tell you something. And when I tell you this, you are going to say, my, my, David, we would never have believed it. Let's try that. My, my, David, we would never have believed that. When I was about 15 at secondary school, we had a careers advisor. And the careers advisor met with us every four weeks. And he would say to me, David, what do you want to do when you leave school? And I said to him, well, I'm not really sure. I said, uh, I'd like to do something creative. And then I'd see him in four weeks' time and he'd say the same question to me, David, what, what do you want to do when you leave school? And I'd say, well, I've changed my mind since four weeks ago. I want to do something completely different. Then I see in four weeks' time and it would be something else. So I always say my career's advice was not good, but really he was working with uh, some hard, a hard case. <laughs> but I want to tell you what I wanted to do when I was really young. When I was about eight, I really wanted to be a clown. <laughs> my, 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 my. <laughs> <laughs> Who shouted out, no surprise, who was that? <laughs> See, I knew you'd be stunned. And some people say, David, you have achieved your ambition. <laughs> I really wanted to just make people happy. And so I thought a clown was the ideal job to do. But you know, careers advice, jobs that we want to do, things can change. And today we're thinking about Palm Sunday. And we're thinking about how the crowds changed. From one day they were calling out for Jesus to be welcomed as a new king. That's what we remember on Palm Sunday. But just a few days later the same crowd were calling out for him to be crucified on a cross. They changed their minds from one day to the next. I gave up on my wish of being a clown. <laughs> I changed my mind. But Jesus is saying to us today, are you going to welcome me as your king? What kind of welcome are you going to give to me? And if you're going to welcome me as your king, how's that going to change the way that you live? So I want to think today about how we can make Jesus welcome in our lives. I've got three steps 
to share with you this morning. They're easy, they're simple things that we can all do, but three ways that we can make Jesus welcome in our lives. And I've tried to take them from the Palm Sunday reading. So I thought we would do a song uh, together. Uh, this song has got some sign language with it. And uh, what was that? Good. Oh, good, good. So this song, uh, it goes like this. Glory and honour to you we bring. Beautiful. Now, beautiful is like when I cook Mel a lovely meal like I did yesterday and like I'm going to later on today and as I will do on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. And uh, um, she always goes, oh, David, that is beautiful. That's how you do beautiful in sign language. Beautiful Saviour, <laughs> your praise we sing, heaven bows down and worships your name, God of creation we praise. It's a, it's a very easy to do song and uh, if you want to join in with the actions please do, if you, if you prefer to just sit there or not do the actions that's absolutely fine, nobody's taking notes. Um, but uh, we'll stand as we worship God, those of us that are willing and able to do that. Glory and honour.
Please have a seat. So today is Palm Sunday. Do you, do you ever have uh, anything like this happen to you? I, I'm, I'm hoping that you, you might do. In fact, I know for some of you, this is true. Have you ever had some chocolate that you've had ready to give to somebody as a gift? <laughs> I'm not looking at anybody in particular, but you may have had chocolate that's been sitting there and you're sort of thinking one evening as you're watching telly and there's nobody there to persuade you otherwise. <clears throat> it wouldn't matter if I had just one bite of chocolate. I could always replace it the next day. Is anybody, is anybody feeling this is directed at them? <laughs> Ron's not, definitely not, Ron's saying. Some of you definitely are. And you sort of think, well, if I, if I just have one cabbage cream egg, <laughs> I'll stop there. And then you sit there and you think to yourself, that was rather nice. <laughs> I wonder what it would be like if I had another Cadbury's cream egg. And within no time, as somebody said to me recently, I'd eaten all six <coughs> in the box. <laughs> You've done that. What's your favourite chocolate? Shout out your favourite chocolate. Cadbury's. Cadbury's chocolate. What's your dairy milk? Yes. Yeah. Dairy milk. Okay. Anybody else got a favourite? Black magic. Black magic. <laughs> Fantastic. Very good. Dunks. Sorry, Steve. Dunks. Sorry. Galaxy, uh, Lisa, do you want to say anything? <laughs> Green and black, but if you're in the mood, any chocolate will do. Mel usually laughs at me because I say, I love chocolate, and she says, she doesn't like eating a white chocolate because she's too sweet. I say, oh, it's chocolate, it's just chocolate, you just eat it. But um, there is a temptation, isn't there? And sometimes we get tempted with things like chocolate. And to be honest, you know, nobody's gonna condemn you for eating chocolate, but there are other things that we get involved in that are a little bit more dangerous when we get tempted by them. Bought something here uh, for you today, and um, I want you to imagine that this rump represents your life. Not the length of it, just, just the piece of rope represents your life. And you're going along okay most of the time, and you're thinking, life's pretty good. Life's pretty good. Speaking to a lady last week, she said to me, David, I love Cadbury's cream eggs. I love them. And I said, I've got two boxes of 12, no, four boxes of 12 Cadbury's cream eggs in my study at Mother Church at Christchurch. I said, I've got four boxes of 12, 48 Cadbury's cream eggs sitting in my study. I don't know who put them there. Mel? I don't know who put them there, but uh, they're there. And uh, I'm, I'm tempted by them occasionally. I feel that sometimes they've got a voice. They, they're calling to me, they're calling out, David, just one bite. And I said to this lady a couple of weeks ago, she came to a meeting I was doing, I said, oh, I've got a couple of boxes of cabbage cream eggs for you. I said, you know, if you've eaten all two boxes by next week, I'll meet in next week, and then I'll give you two more boxes. She came this week, she said, I've got one left. <laughs> Bless her heart. Sometimes our life is going on quite smoothly. Everything's all right. Everything's all right. I've got a, a bottle here. It's not a bottle for any reason. It's just a, a bottle. And uh, this bottle, if you like, represents things that we're tempted by. Because when we give in to temptation, sometimes we call it a sin. Sometimes we say it's something that I've done that I'm not proud of and uh, I wish I could be released from it. And it's a, it's a bit like... Uh, 
a bit like this. We go along with our life quite well and we think, I'll just have a little bit of that. But it's all right because I only had a little bit of it and I can, I can give it up whenever I want to. And then we think, I'll have another go because it was all right last time. I'll have another cabbage cream egg or whatever it is you might do. And uh, we think to ourselves, oh, that's okay. We've got away with it. But the more we keep doing it, the more it turns our life upside down. And when it turns our life upside down, it is very difficult to let go of it. It's very difficult to let go. You can't really even pull that rope out. But Jesus says, I've come. I've come so that you can have your life back. But we all get tempted by different things. So I want to warn you this morning, we've all got weak spots. When I learned to drive, my driving instructor said to me, you need to be aware of your blind spot. Do you, do you remember that when you learned to drive? Everybody's blind spot. We've all got spiritual blind spots as well. And we, we are tempted to do things and when we, when, we give up, when we give in to them, it's very difficult. Stephen, just so that I'm not doing this, just try and pull that rope out of the bottle for me. No good? <laughs> no good? It's impossible. It is impossible. It can't be done. Try it now. Try again now. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, when we give in to temptation, we need to know there's somebody on our side. And that person who's on our side is Jesus. And he says, I know you get tempted by things, Temptation in itself is not a sin. It's when we give in to it that it grabs hold of us, stops us from doing the things that we know we should be doing. And one of the ways that we come through that is by welcoming Jesus into our lives. By saying to Jesus, this is who I am, Lord. I'm being honest with you. I mess up all the time. This is who I am. And he says, just make me welcome in your life. Just make me welcome. I'll deal with all the baggage that you bring with you. I'll deal with all the rubbish. We'll deal with that together. So I wanted to share that with you. Mark Twain said, I can resist everything apart from temptation. <laughs> all of us can be tempted by different things. Let's pray to God and let's ask him just to take those times where we've given in to what tempts us. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we thank you so much for your amazing love. Lord, you, you know us. You know everything about us. Lord, we, we don't want everybody in this church today to know everything that we've ever thought or everything that we've ever said or everything that we've ever done because we'd be embarrassed, we'd be ashamed. But when you call us, you call us to be honest with you. We don't have to confess things in front of each other, we just have to confess them to you. And so Lord, we just pray for those blind spots in our lives, those weaknesses that are in our lives. Lord, we pray that you would help us to be strengthened, to be given new passion for following your ways. And Lord, we pray that you would release us from those things where we know we give in time and time again. Release us from those dangerous places, Lord. And help us on this Palm Sunday to welcome you into our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing together. Um, I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. How he left his home in glory. 
for the cross of Calvary. It's where it's there that he broke the power of sin in our lives. Shall we stand if you're willing and able and we'll worship God. Tied there, 
which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are untying it, say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as they told them. As they were untying the coat, its owners asked them, why are you untying the coat? They replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the coat, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees said to, in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, <coughs> rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Daphne. The journey had been long. We got stuck in traffic, there were roadworks, there was an accident on the motorway, there was all sorts of things going on. But as we drove, I kept focused on what I was told would be mine when we arrived at our hotel. They said that when anybody arrives at the hotel, you get given on arrival a warm, freshly baked chocolate cookie. <laughs> it got me through the long traffic jam. It got me around the accident that was going on and recovery that was going on. It focused me. The trouble was when we arrived, nobody gave us a warm, <laughs> freshly baked cookie. They'd given all the supply out already that day. I wouldn't have minded if they hadn't said that they were going to give me a warm, freshly baked chocolate chip cookie. But they did say it, and therefore I was expecting it. If they hadn't said it on the advert, I wouldn't have thought twice about it. But they'd said they were going to do it, and they failed to live up to what they said they were going to do. Friends, we need to know that we have a God who keeps his promises, who says to us, I think you are incredibly special. I think that you are so important. I've adopted you as my child. He doesn't mind about our background. He doesn't mind how many times we sin. He doesn't mind how many times we let people down. He says to us, if you want a fresh start, there is always a welcome here. And friends, I want to talk to you today, not about the God who welcomes, but how we welcome him into our lives. I toyed with the idea of all different sorts of things today. Palm Sunday is one of those Sundays where there are so many different angles that you can take. But I wanted to take this angle of how can we welcome Jesus like the crowds welcomed Jesus? I want to uh, share that uh, with you this morning. There are times when I wonder if I let God down in welcoming him into my life. In fact, I don't wonder, I know that there are times in my life when I don't welcome God in the way that I should. Because all of us, when we become Christians, make a commitment to God. But as time goes on, I'm guessing you, like me, 
you'll find that our welcome of the Holy Spirit is not all that it should be. So our three quick steps, three quick steps for you to use today. First of all, welcome Jesus and invite him to go ahead of you. I, uh, I hope that you picked that up in um, the reading that Daphne shared with us. It said, um, after telling this story, Jesus went on towards Jerusalem, walking ahead of the disciples. You know, welcoming Jesus to be our, our, our leader is an essential part of being his disciples. Allowing Jesus to go ahead of us is such an important part of making him welcome in our lives. It can be a difficult step though, can't it? Trusting God that he's got the future all sorted out if we trust him and if we welcome him. If you're anything like me, you like to decide where you're going to go, what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. But if you struggle to let Jesus take control of your life, just listen to this verse. This is from uh, Matthew's Gospel. And it's uh, words of Jesus. And um, I just think they are words that we need to hang on to. And they simply say this, he says when he gets there. It's in Matthew chapter 6 and verses, uh, verse 33. And it just says this, Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and then he will give you everything that you need. Isn't that a wonderful verse? Seek God first. Know that he's going before you. And if you just trust him in that, he will give you Everything that you need, not everything that you want, that's a different thing altogether, but everything that you need, things that you and I need in our lives, he will give them to us if we put him first and allow him to go ahead of us. There's a, there's a great song, we don't sing it so much in church these days, it's a fairly modern song, the last uh, 25 years or so, and it goes, step by step, we're moving forward. Little by little, we're taking ground. Every prayer, a powerful weapon. But it's step by step. It doesn't say hour by hour. It doesn't say day by day or year by year. It says step by step. You know, friends, you don't have to see the whole path ahead of you before taking the first step. You just need to see the next step and to trust that Jesus is going before you and that as he goes before you, he will reveal the next step to you. Mel and I used to be officers in the Boys Brigade many years ago and uh, we had an officer called John Beasley. John Beasley, he, he was a lovely man as far as I could tell, um, but he, he got his measurements wrong on a lot of things. He used to take, uh, say to us at uh, camps, he used to say, I'm, I'm leading a hike, would anybody like to come? Now, if, if I've learned now that if somebody says they're going on a hike, you just say no. But, but <laughs> at the time, we thought, oh, a nice stroll in the countryside along the beach, it'll be lovely. And then you'd ask him after about three hours of walking, <laughs> how much further is this gonna be? And he used to say, just another mile and it became known as the Beasley Mile. His mile could be up to five miles ahead of you. He just strolled, he had the muscles in his legs that pounded as he walked, you know. He, was, he, he could walk miles and miles and miles. And as a 14-year-old boy, I didn't want to walk that far. Sometimes you just need to see the next step. He would say something like this, John Beasley, you see, you see that you see that hill over there? We're almost there when we get there. 
And you keep focused on that hill and you say to yourself, when I get there, we're almost there. And you get there and he'd point out a monument on the next hill and he'd say, just when we get there, we're almost there. And it would go on and on and on like this. It turned out to be a midnight hike. John Beasley, the Beasley Mile. God says to us, just trust me for the next step. It's all I'm asking of you. You might not understand what's in the future. You might be confused about it. But trust me. Welcome me into your life to go ahead of you. Step by step. So that's the first way that we make Jesus welcome in our lives. Welcome him by allowing him to go before us. Second step is this. Willingly give to Jesus what he asks of you. I've called this cults and coats. The cult. The disciples said to Jesus, what do we say if somebody says, why are you untying this cult? What, what are we to say to them? I mean, imagine just going into a, the car park in Chelmsford and just trying your key in all the different cars to see which somebody might say to you, what do you think you're doing? That's my car, leave it alone. Jesus said, well, if they ask you, just say, the Lord needs it. And when they went to look for the colt, they found the colt and they untied it and lo and behold, what Jesus said happened. Somebody came out, the owner of the colt came out and said, what, what do you think you're doing? And the disciples replied in the way that Jesus said. They said, the master needs it. Friends, they didn't ask any more questions. It doesn't say in the Bible they asked any more questions. Well, what time will you have it back? You know, what, what are you going to do with it? They didn't ask any more questions. They just said, take it. If the master needs it, take it. One way that we make Jesus welcome in our lives. Saying to him, here it is, Lord. And if you're anything like me, you look at him, you say, it's not much. But here it is. Can you do something with it? So sometimes we hold on to things too long and Jesus says, let go of them. Just let go of them. What sort of things am I talking about? What about your time? How are you using your time to welcome Jesus? What about your gifts, your talents? You've all got them. What are you doing with them to welcome Jesus? Maybe your hopes and dreams. What about giving them to Jesus and saying, this is what I'm thinking you. Is this right, Lord? I'm making you welcome. And then that's to do with the cold. But what about the coats? They took their coats off and they threw them on the ground and they let Jesus on this young donkey walk over their coats. You know, in Jesus' day, to have a coat was a, a real, um, it was a really valuable possession. It wasn't like me, I've got, I've got five or six coats and I sort of try and match them. Could I colour blind? Mel often says to me, no, David. <laughs> no, you're not going out looking like that. <laughs> I've got the colours all muddled up and I, I think, I come downstairs some Sunday mornings, I, I come downstairs, I've got my suit on and I, I say to Mel, does this shirt go with this suit? I know it does. And she says, nah, it don't go. You know friends, Jesus is saying to us, would you lay that down before me to, to come on, to walk on? Would you lay it down before me? And it might be something very, very precious to you. It might be something that you value greatly. Will you give it to me so that I can use it? It might be your time. Time is an incredibly precious thing. If you ever notice, it's a strange thing, time, isn't it? Sometimes we've got too much time. Usually when we're waiting for something good to happen, like a birthday, or receiving a gift, I mean, oh, time is dragging on and on and on. Maybe you're thinking that right now. <laughs> Sometimes there seems to be too much time, but then there are other times 
Well, it's just not enough, is there? We say things like, if only there was another day in the week, if only there was another hour in this day, then I'd be able to get everything done. Jesus is saying to you and me, would you release that to me? Would you make me welcome by giving me that gift? Would you do that for me? Jesus says, would you make me welcome by giving me whatever I ask of you? What else could you lay down before him? Maybe Jesus is saying to you, lay down your sin. Lay down your guilt. Maybe lay down your failures or your disappointments. And as quick as we lay these down before Jesus, he is there in our lives. Our response to such things can be a determining factor to how we welcome Jesus in our lives. And then the third step. So the first step is invite Jesus to go ahead. Second step is be willing to give to Jesus whatever he asks. And the third step is this. Use your past experience of Jesus to trust him. I go to that passage that Daphne shared with us. And it says this. All of his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. What can you look back on what God has done in your life and say, wow, if he did that, I think he can do something else in my life now. If he did that five years ago, what is he calling me to do now? What amazing things could he do? They used their past knowledge of Jesus. What they had seen him do, what they had heard him say, what they had discovered about him, to channel their enthusiastic welcome. Friends, if you're thinking Jesus doesn't relate to your life, then let me suggest why he does. Jesus was born into poverty so that the poor can welcome him. Jesus was a refugee so that those who are going through a tough time in their lives can welcome him. Jesus was rejected so that those who are on the margins of life can welcome him. Jesus was said to be a liar so that those who falsely accuse you would feel those who are falsely accused can feel that they can welcome him. Jesus was denied by his closest friends so that those who feel abandoned can welcome him. Jesus experienced pain on the cross so that those experiencing the same pain can welcome him. And Jesus died so that anyone who is in fear about the future can welcome him. And finally, Jesus was raised to new life so that the hopeless can find new hope by welcoming him. Friends, whatever's going on in your life right now, Jesus is saying to you, this Palm Sunday, why don't you welcome me? Invite Jesus to go ahead. Be willing to give to Jesus what he asks of you and use your experience of Jesus to trust him. In his name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing a song. I'm not sure if this song is that well known to you. Um, but I'm hoping that you will soon pick it up. It's, it's the words that I've chosen the song for. When I was lost, you came and rescued me. Reached down into the pit and lifted me. O oh Lord, such love. I was as far from you as I could be. It's quite a lively song. Um, so if you want to, if you want to dance, dance. <laughs> Don't worry, Mel, I won't do it. <laughs> Don't worry. I, I did dad dancing at our daughter's wedding and it's, uh, 
I'm glad she's only getting married once because she wouldn't want to see me dance like that again on a dance floor. But if you, if you feel inclined to, uh, to move a bit during this song, uh, then do that. If you want to stretch your legs during this song, uh, do that. Shall we stand, those who are willing and able, and we'll worship God.
we're going to come before God in prayer in just a moment. And I just want to uh, say to you, just as we were singing that song, I felt that God was saying to some of us here, give to me the things that you're most precious about. Give me the things that you enjoy the most. I, I speak to all sorts of people about church. And one of the saddest things I hear people say to me is, I'm not good enough to come to church. Friends, that, that just doesn't make sense. What have we done as churches to make people feel they have to reach a certain standard before they come in? I, I delight in telling people, and you might not be too chuffed, but I tell people, we're just a bunch of sinners. <laughs> and we believe that we've found the friend of sinners. We're no better than anybody else, but we're in a better position because of what Jesus has done. Friends, I joked with you at the start that I do the cooking in our house. I do it because I love it. I find cooking a way of releasing uh, the burdens of a day. I enjoy doing that. Um, Mel does everything else. She does the ironing and the hoovering and the dusting and, and everything else, the shopping and everything else like that. But I... I Give to God what I enjoy. And one of my friends once said to me, if I was to become a Christian, and I've been talking to him about it for a long while, he said, what would God want me to do? And I said, Adrian, tell me, why do you ask that? And he said, because I imagine if I became a Christian, God would get me to do something that I really didn't like to do. And I thought about that and I thought, why would God do that? Surely God is saying to each of us, what do you enjoy doing? What do you enjoy doing? Do you enjoy cooking? Do you enjoy worship? Do you enjoy serving people? Do you enjoy giving people lifts in your car? In your car? Whatever it is, God says, give it to me. Let me use that. And so as we pray together, I just want you to think about not only the words that uh, June is going to share with us, but also think about what is God asking you to lay before Jesus this Palm Sunday. Thanks, June. Let us pray. Today we remember that Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey. People cheered him and laid palms on the road ahead of him. We bring ourselves, our hopes, dreams and prayers to Jesus, the King and centre of our hearts. We pray for the Reverends David, Rachel and Roman and all church leaders as we start this journey through Holy Week. May they help us to accompany Jesus through his passion, death and resurrection, so that together we will celebrate the joys of Easter. We pray for people suffering, whose suffering unites them in a special way to Jesus during Holy Week. May they receive the comfort and support that they need at this time, and may they find hope on their journey towards Easter. We pray for all those who, like the donkey, can sometimes feel themselves to be overworked and underpaid as they carry out thankless and unseen work on behalf of others. May they receive the recognition and thanks that they deserve. <clears throat> we pray for families as we look towards Easter. May they keep in mind the real meaning of Holy Week and in seeing love's possibilities, be enriched in their relationships with each other. We also pray for our own families, wherever they may be. We remember all who are sick, those in hospital and those who are housebound. We remember especially Eileen Hainsworth, Daphne Bartell, Ruth and Paul Gilman, Marion Gregg, Pat Mills, Evelyn Ross, Paul Starry, and Mary and Dennis Russian, whose circumstances make it difficult for them to be with us. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
Be with us as we accompany Jesus into Holy Week and towards his passion, death and resurrection. May Palm Sunday be our doorway to Easter. Amen. Amen. And now I'd like to just say a special prayer for Ukraine, which has been written by Justin Welby and Stephen Cottrell. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Thanks, Jean. We are in just a moment going to share communion together. Um, just, just want to say to uh, to you, I'll try and say this whenever I lead a communion service. Um, just want to say to you that, and forgive me if you've heard me say this before, I'm not inviting you to come and receive bread and wine. This church council of this church are not inviting you to come. The membership of this church are not inviting you to come. Jesus is the one. He says to you, don't worry about whether you've been baptised or whether you've been confirmed or whether you're a church member. If you love me, Jesus says, then take bread. Remember that I died on the cross for you. Take wine. Remember that I poured out my blood for you. Take me, Jesus says, welcome me into your lives because I am, as Jim reminds us, the Prince of Peace. I am the one who holds the future in my hands. There's a street in New York City outside an office block on this busy street. Mind you, I suppose all the streets in New York are busy. I've never been there, but I imagine. And outside this office block, there is a statue. And the statue is of the man Atlas. And he's there and he's bending over with the weight of the world on his shoulders. And he's just about managing to hold up the weight of the world. The muscles in his legs are stretched to their full potential. They are there. You can see that he's straining. And friends, sometimes when we come to communion, we feel like that, don't we? I do. I think, oh, I'm I've got so much resting on my shoulders, Lord. How am I going to get it all done? Opposite that statue, that office block, there is a Catholic cathedral. And inside the Catholic cathedral is a statue of the child Jesus. And he's got his hand out and he's holding the world in the palm of his hand. Friends, that's the Jesus. He's saying to you, I've got all of this worry, all of this anxiety, all of this pain, all of this suffering. I've got it in the palm of my hand because I am bigger than the world. I created the world. And I want you today to just remember what Corrie Ten Boom once said. This woman who survived the Nazi concentration camp, she said this, sometimes we're too busy wrestling with God that we forget to nestle with God. Isn't that a lovely picture? God just holding us. Just nestle with God. Don't wrestle with him. You're not going to understand everything. Just nestle with God. Let him have his arms around you today. So the invitation is to all of you. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you love him and you're trying your best to follow his ways, then come. Receive bread and receive wine. Shall we pray together? Let's pray.
Lord Jesus, we come to you now because we know that you are the hope of our world. Lord, we come to you because in you we find our meaning and our purpose. We come to you now because we know that on that cross we find our forgiveness and your mercy. Lord, accept us, we pray. With all of our mistakes, all of our errors, all the things that we get wrong, wipe us clean through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Lord, accept us as we are, but don't leave us as we are. Change us, Lord, to be more like you. Lord, just in a moment of quiet, we just lift to you the things that are on our hearts as we come here today. Jesus says, come, not because you must, but because you may. Come not to declare that you are righteous, but because you desire to be true disciples. Come not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come not because you have any claim on heaven's rewards, but because in your frailty and your sin, you stand in constant need of heaven's mercy and heaven's help. Lord, we pray for this bread and this wine. May it be for us a reminder of all that happened on the cross on Good Friday. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for giving everything up for us. On the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and having given thanks to God, he broke it and he said, take and eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup and he gave it to his disciples and he said, drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it and remember me. We're going to bring communion to you. So you haven't got to get up from your seat. Let Jesus be coming to you to bless you, to feed you, to release you. I'm going to bring the bread round. If you wish to receive, if you just hold your hand out in front of you, I will place a wafer in your hands. We'll all then wait until everybody is received. And when everybody is received and we're back at the front, we'll all eat it together. Do the same with the cup as we bring them round. Uh, take a cup, hold on to it until all have received. We'll all have received, we'll come together and drink together. You are welcome at this table.
So this is the body of Christ, broken on the cross for our salvation. Amen. Amen. June and myself are going to bring the cups around to you. If you just take one, if you wish to receive, and uh, just hold on to it until all have received. Thanks, June. Yeah, if you do this. This is for us, the blood of Christ, shed on the cross for our salvation. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you that you have nourished us with the bread of life. You have refreshed us with the cup of salvation. May we who have received this sacrament be strengthened in your service. We who have sung your praises live in your glory. And we who have known the greatness of your love see you face to face in your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're going to uh, bring the offertory forward now and um, just pray over that and before we've got a couple of notices and then I'll ask him. So, uh, thank you, Jennifer. Bless you. Thank you. Let us pray together. Gracious God, we pray your blessing upon these gifts. Lord, we pray that as a church, you would help us to be wise in the way that we use these gifts. That you would turn these gifts of our money into the resources that we need. Whether that be to pay for uh, the fuel that's needed to keep this church warm. Whether it be that these gifts are transferred into uh, materials for our children and their groups. Lord, whatever these gifts are used for, 
May they bring glory to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, we've got a couple of notices, I believe, and uh, then we'll sing our final song. Uh, Mel and somebody else. Maggie. Just if you know already that I'm um, organising a breakfast at Christchurch um, in six weeks' time, and we're having um, Lisa Potts as our guest speaker. Uh, if anyone you don't know about uh, Lisa, just four months after the Dunblane massacre in 1996, Lisa was a nursery school teacher at um, a primary school in Wolverhampton, and she was attacked whilst trying to protect the children at a teddy bear's picnic by a man armed with a machete. She sustained serious injuries and subsequently developed depression and PTSD. She's now in her 40s and she speaks of how her faith in God carried her through this terrifying experience and her rehabilitation, including how she came to terms with being in the public eye. Um, so it's on May the 21st at Christchurch, it's a women's breakfast and um, I really encourage you, if you haven't already, um, to buy your tickets and perhaps bring a friend along. And tickets are going fairly quickly, so if you'd like to come, um, please get some tickets from Christchurch. And all the details are on this poster, and Mike has very kindly put it on the notice board. Thank you. <coughs> so it's just a reminder that we have the AGM on um, Sunday the 1st of May and I've got some nomination forms here for people who um, to be elected onto church council so if anybody would like a nomination form or would like to be nominated could you come see me afterwards um, what I might do is actually put these notices or these nomination forms up on the notice board so you can just go and help yourself to do them thank you Thank you guys. That might be one way that you can lay before Jesus your time. Would you serve on the church council here? We have palm crosses uh, very kindly given to us um, by uh, Suzanne and um, she's ordered these for us. Uh, it's for you to take away. Um, whatever you do with it, I know that some people collect them from year to year. And whatever you do with it, I like to write prayers on mine. Um, but whatever you do with it, let it be a symbol to you that Jesus needs to be welcomed into our lives, just as he was welcomed into the city that day. I'll leave the crosses at the back if you wish to take one. Please do that on the way out. We're going to sing our last hymn. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand hath made. Thank you. 
Lord, how great you are. Thank you for sending Jesus into this world. Thank you for Palm Sunday and all that it means to us. May we prepare our hearts this week to celebrate next Sunday the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ and the hope that that gives to each and every one of us. But in the next week, we need to travel the road which is marked with suffering before we get to Easter Sunday. And so may the blessing of God Almighty, who is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you and those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.